Once, House Arryn flew as high as honor. That was a long time ago. The Vale of Arryn, named after my family, now belongs to petty kings who bicker for scraps in the wake of the breaking of the throne. I have a duty to restore faith and order, but my task will not be easy. The Falcon of House Arryn will fly high once more. Hello Wanderers, welcome to a brand new Crusader Kings 3 Game of Thrones roleplay series following House Arryn and more specifically King Daemon Arryn of the Mountain and Vale. Now if you haven't watched our House Peak and House Blackfire playthroughs, you might be a little confused about the scenario that we find ourselves in, but I did make an entire video explaining how we got to where we are. But if you don't want to go back and watch all that, you don't need to. Just know that in this world, the Blackfire invasion of the Iron Throne with a wildling army was successful, and that caused such a degree of chaos that the Iron Throne was shattered, and now there are many, many kings running around the lands Take, trying to take power for themselves. And that's the situation King Damon finds himself in. So we are going to pop back out of here and take a little look at the world. So you can see here we are in the Eerie, but things are a little bit chaotic. Indeed, even in the Vale, there are many kings who are fighting for power. King Garbin of House Weatherwax, King Jarrett Nine Fingers of Strong Song. We've got the Bronze Kings of House Royce over here in the Runestone, and the King of Gulltown as well. And then all across the world, we have many other independent lands here. The Storm, the Storm Queen, we've got King Miles of the Marches, the King of Golden Grove. Indeed, there are many, many independent kings here, the Marsh Kings of the Neck. Even the Starks have been pushed out of their traditional seat of Winterfell and forced to reside here in White Harbor as the wildling armies under House Blackfire have invaded the North and have taken much of it. So we won't go into all of those details. If you want to take a look at that episode, I will leave a link to it. But the all you need to know is that House Arryn has fallen far from where they once were, and now we really only hold the Veil and the, the Bloody Gate here and the Passage from the Veil to the Riverlands. So we are much diminished in power. Now let's take a look at our character, King Damon. Who is he? Well, he is a compassionate character. So, you know, uh, a good, you know, he's a good man uh, who does not, uh, does not hope for ill for anyone. He is a zealous. So he's a zealous follower of the faith of the seven. He is diligent and he is just. This is all together. Just a very good, a deeply religious character here who will try to do his best by the people he, who he rules over. And, and I think that he, and I hope that he will be successful at that anyways. He is a charismatic negotiator, so although he does have a little bit of combat prowess, he is a diplomatic person through and through. He's not going to resort first to the blade, but he will do so if, if needed. Uh, he's an eager reveler. I mean, he's 17 years old. You know, he probably enjoys a little bit of of feasting and such things as that, even though he is diligent. Uh, he has been knighted, and he is a trained fighter, so not particularly skilled, but he knows his way around a sword. Uh, you can see his stats here. So he's got pretty good diplomacy and pretty good swordship. Marshall is fairly low. Intrigue, very low. This is not an intrigue type character, and he's fairly well learned. Uh, you can see we only hold the titles of the Kingdom of the Mountain and Vale, the Lord Paramountcy of the Vale, the High Lordship of Giant's Lands, and then the Eerie itself. We have three vassals here that you can see as well. We've got Lady Delan of House Top. We've got Lord Osgood the Bloody of the Bloody Gate. And then we've got Lord Bastion of House Derry here on the High Road. So those are all of our vassals. This is all we got right now. We are probably the smallest of the various kings of the Vale at the moment, so we're going to need to do something about that. But we won't worry about that just yet. Let's take a look at the rest of our situation here. So uh, 
King Damon, you can see he is quite young for his age and his father is still alive. Sir Baxter Arryn here, the former king of Mountain and Vale, has abdicated the throne. And that is because after developing the lover's pox through his rakish ways, uh, he became reclusive, you know, very embarrassed by it all. He's a coward. You know, he's just not the type of character who he, he didn't want to be king anymore. So he abdicated the throne to his son, who is much better suited towards it. So although our father is still alive, we are currently the king of Mountain and Vale. And this was just something that happened very recently within the last year or so. So King Damon has not been king for long. He has spent most of his life as Prince Damon. Let's take a look at our characters' relationships. Number one, obviously, we have our wife, Queen Hannah uh, of House Derry. So we obviously have close connections with House Derry, which is probably going to put us into opposition here with King Marin of House Darkseid here in the Trident's mouth here. Uh, this character is a ironborn uh, zealot who follows the the storm god. I mean, he's not zealous, but he just follows this this storm god here, rejecting the traditional ironborn worship of the drowned god. There are those who worship his mortal enemy, the storm god, said to dwell in a cloudy hall in the sky. Well, he holds the lands that were traditionally belong to House Derry, so we're gonna have to try to get that back for our wife's family at some point here. Uh, she's a little bit cowardly, but she's patient and diligent, so we probably actually get along reasonably well. Uh, she is a little bit lustful, which, you know, is not terrible for, you know, our king, unless she starts uh, sleeping around. But I think we'll pr try to prevent that by perhaps trying to romance here, and we actually have a 100% success chance. I think a young man like King Damon here, he gets married you know, his wife is maybe not be particularly beautiful or or anything like that. But I do think that we would, you know, want to believe in the chivalrous ideal of romance. So, you know, perhaps we will write her a love poem here. Your femininity is the rock I cling to in stormy seas. My heart yearns to hear your voice again that I may know true joy, you and me together forever. Well, I cannot encourage you, my liege. I am most grateful for your kind words. Your, yours faithfully, Hannah. She won't resist my charms for long, that's for sure. We are quite charming indeed. So our wife, uh, not particularly skilled in anything, but she does have decent stewardship, intrigue, and learning. Uh, let's take a look here. We've got her managing our domain for now, which I think is probably fine. We probably could set her to court intrigue but i don't think we need the intrigue i'd rather have my my uh stewardship up boosted as it is now so that is that our character does have a few uh character relationships here we have a good friend our best friend in fact tegan white now tegan is from a minor noble house here and as we we came across him when we were just a young prince kind of getting a little bit bullied for his uh, is more, how we say, a bookish kind of nature. You know, he wasn't a rowdy sort like some of the others. So we kind of stepped in when we were going through his lands and we essentially uh, earned this young man's loyalty. He asked to serve us and we agreed and we became fast friends. So you can see he is our best friend. We've actually made him our ward and our squire as well. And so we will be working towards uh, knighting him, even though he is a, a bookish sort. You know, the he is from a noble house. He is from House White here. So you can see, you know, he's got a noble family. His father holds some lands here. And we are going to, we're going to try to knight him and give him a good position uh, in our court. So uh, we could give him a little bit of training here as well. Uh, let's teach him a little bit about... Uh, let's see. Swordsmanship, chivalry. Yeah, let's do chivalry. Let's teach him a little bit about chivalry. We'll wait for that event to fire, but in the meantime, our character does have a, another friend, and that is our sister, Arwen Arryn, who is married to Morton of House Templeton, and that is perfectly acceptable there. We do have a few other siblings. Orson, our younger brother, who is uh, currently ill, but hopefully he will recover. And then another younger sister, Alina R, in here. And of course, our mother still lives, Linella Penrose. 
And uh, unfortunately, she was affected by the same lover's box as her father. The two of them. Yeah, who got it first? Hard to say, but, you know, it is what it is. Actually, this character isn't our mother. Our mother was our father's previous wife's wife from House Redfort here. So, unfortunately, our mother passed away in childbirth, I guess giving birth to our brother Orson here. That's, that's sad and unfortunate. We've kind of got a little bit of, you know, our brother kind of reminds me of um, Rob Aron, but uh, it is uh, what it is here. So that is, that is kind of our family, our current situation. Now we do need to take one look at one last character here, and that is Sir Andrew Crabb. This is a hedge knight, and he is a very interesting sort of guy here. So. Uh, he is a follower of R'hllor, so, you know, we might not look too kindly about that because we are zealous, but he is an honorable man, and he is a good warrior, and he has come to serve House Arryn here, so, and, and with the lack of skilled warriors that we have, it's hard to turn away anyone at this point. So this Hedge Knight is quite skilled, but he is a, a little bit obsessed with the flames and things like that, but we'll see how the, how things turn up for him. We are going to make sure that he is one of our knights. We can hold a lot of knights, and we've got a lot of accolades here, uh, as you can quite see here. Yeah, there's there's quite a few knights. Can we get one last one? I mean, we could if we allow. <laughs> we'll have to fix that. You know what? Let's uh let's make him one of our acclaimed knights. We'll call this the uh, the fire of the veil. I don't know. Yeah, the flame of the veil. Flame of the Veil. Uh, this isn't maybe us naming. This is probably a title that he has somehow earned for himself. A Valiant Contender. That seems pretty fine. There we go. And now he is all set up and good to go. We're going to quickly get rid of that silly looking helmet. There we go. So that character is all set up as our acclaimed knight. He's probably going to fight well for us. He's got pretty decent prowess. So we shall see if he earns perhaps our friendship or at the very least, proves himself to be a loyal follower. So there we go. That's all the characters that you need to know about. We do have some kind of main threats here. Uh, obviously, King Jarrett Nine Fingers of House of the Kingdom of Strong Song, House Egan here, and the House of Weatherwax. Those are going to be our two main rivals in the Vale. We're going to have to figure out how to deal with them. It's not going to be easy, but we will have to do what we can and then we'll we'll figure things out from there we might honestly be better off going for uh the trident's mouth here first to just kind of establish some power we don't the thing is for our current character we know of the heritage of house Arryn. we once ruled all of the veil vale. that was probably 50 60 years ago now so like a generation or two ago but it's still within the minds of people like that House Arryn once ruled these lands. So being just, I think that it is the just thing to do would say that House Arryn should rule its traditional lands. But we will have to work towards that because I don't think Weatherwax or Egan or Royce or Grafton are all going to be giving up their power very easily now, now that they've worked very hard to take it. So... Uh, that's going to be our goal is kind of building up our power base, but we don't just need to take the veil. We could expand in other ways. We could, you know, take this side of the mountains too. Uh, hard to say. Uh, we'll, we'll let things go as they kind of play out in the story. We do need to choose a lifestyle. We could go for diplomacy here, but because we are young and bold, we're actually going to go for chivalry focus because I think that makes the most sense for a character our age. That's going to give us a nice little boost to our prowess as well. And I just think it's fitting. A 17-year-old, you know, just knighted, just became king. Chivalry, you know, we, we're trying to woo our wife. I think it makes a lot of sense that our character would go down the chivalrous route. We do need to fill out our cancel, council. So we're going to need a Castellan. I believe that, oh, you know, Lord Osgood would be a perfectly suitable Castellan here. We're going to put him in that position. Let's see, do we get him to oversee our realm? Probably, that's going to give us that nice little martial lifestyle experience boost. So that's pretty good there. Uh, we do need a chancellor. I think that we will put Lord Bastion of High Road. So we're going to give honor to House Derry 
the house of our wife by putting him in the position of the chancellor. We'll need a steward here, so we're going to put a Lady Delan here of House Top as the ruler or the steward of our lands. We're also going to need a marshal, Lady Deanna, the Slow Moon of Snow. Um, She's not particularly great. I think we're going to put Luther Harwell in that position. So he's one of our acclaimed knights, and he is quite skilled at that. So Luther Harwell, you will be our master at arms. And then we need a spy master as well. And, you know, it could be interesting for our father to still have a little bit of influence on the realm. So we're going to put our father as our spy master. I think that's kind of cool. And I do quite like that. And then we have Halder Barwick as our High Septon. And he is possessed, so he's a little bit a little bit crazy. So that is our council. And hopefully they will serve us well. Lord Osgood here is just uh, all these people with the seven pointed star carved into their head. They always there's some there's some about those guys, you know. Uh, but in any case, there is our council. We're all set up and good to go. And I think we do we need to take care of anything else? We can ask our head of faith for gold. Um, we might as well. Every zealot vassal loses 10 opinion of you. Ah, you know what? Do we need to? I don't think we need to, so I'm not going to. You can appoint a worthy successor to the Watcher in the Mountains. Uh, which one is that? The Watcher in the Mountains successor. Ah, no. The, we're not going to put our father as a successor to an accolade. That doesn't make sense. A uh, few knights. We can't really do too much about that. Oh, we do have some winged knights as our men at arms. I would like to get some more men at arms. Uh, do we ask the head of faith for gold? I mean, maybe we do. Maybe we do need it. You know what? I think we are going to actually ask. This is probably something that our, our father and our counselors would probably be suggesting that we do you know perhaps lady delan here would be suggesting this our father certainly uh, might suggest this just because we need the the coin to fund our future products we can oh, who is this this is you can pardon your uncle-in-law hmm i guess this is uh someone related to to my wife i guess uncle-in-law um, let's see. He doesn't hold any titles or anything like that. What is he? He's excommunicated. Ugh, I mean, we can't pardon him if he's excommunicated uh, and we're going to ask the High Septon for some money, so we won't do that. So, looks like everything here is basically good to go. We can negotiate alliances. Ooh, this could be helpful. Yeah, you know what? We could get a strong alliance with Hearts Home here, so I think that we will. And Les Lady Desmona of Nightsong. Oh wow, very powerful. Very powerful duchy here, Nightsong is. These alliances could be very good for protecting ourselves. So we are a diplomatic character. We are going to try to get these alliances where we can. The, the one with Corbray is going to be the best one because that is going to give us, I believe House Corbray is right over here Indeed, they are. So that's going to be pretty pretty helpful for us. Uh, so Teague and I practice chivalry, and he demonstrated excellent chivalrous behavior. I was very pleased to see how he embraced the concepts I taught him. So very good, Tegan. Uh, perhaps he will make a, a good knight. I've considered your plight and decided to grant your request. May these funds help you spread the true faith in your land. You know what? We are a zealous character. We will do our best to spread the true faith here in the veil. So there we go. We got our alliances here. So that is excellent, excellent news. So what is our first step from here? I mean, we've got some money. Do we do a grand tournament? I mean, we don't have the money to host a grand tournament. I would like to. Ooh, university visit. This could be good. We could gain some lifestyle experience and things like that. Could upgrade our trait. Um, plan a university visit. I actually kind of like this idea. Uh, go down all the way down to Starry Sep. That's the only place that you can get uh, an education like that here. Um, 
perhaps we do go. I mean, it's a little expensive. Let's see here. Decreased gold cost. Oh, wow. That's a much decreased gold cost here. Um, slightly increased activity success progress. Random skill point. Uh, let's... Do we just go with scrap parchments? I mean, we're not... I don't think we can go with scrap parchments. We are, after all, a, a noble lord here. So we are going to... We're going to wait. Let's see if we can get a little bit of money somehow anyways. Ammon Ricker has a claim on the lordship of Duskendale. That's a little far for us. Duskendale's over here in the kingdom of the Bay. So I don't think that's going to be super helpful. Notable guest, Val Blackfire. Well, we don't want any Blackfires in here, so you could just leave. We don't have any, we don't want anything to do with House Blackfire. Lord Oddsgood was impressed by the honor of the royal favor we bestowed upon him. Well, very, very good for you. I don't remember doing that, but apparently we did. Lady Delint. Oh, good. She's come to give us some money. Thank you. I accept your generous gifts, Lady Delon. Thank you very much. Excellent. You know, we could potentially sell something. We have a few artifacts. You know, maybe we can get rid of this book, Maritime Trading Book. That's not going to be super useful to us. Uh, maybe we just go and sell this to get some... Oh, yeah, that's 80 coins there. That is... And what about this perf perfume? That's actually... You know, I might want to keep that. Um, but now we'll have enough money for our university visit. So, you know what? I think it's worth it to travel down to Old Town uh, to get ourselves, you know, to meet some of these other kings, some of these other nobles. I mean, we just made an alliance with the Lord, the Lady of Nightsong here. And so I think it makes a lot of sense to go on this university visit here. So we're going to do that. We're going to go down here to Old Town, which is ruled by House uh, Tarly, I believe. Let's see, there's no danger on the road, so nothing to be concerned about there. And no, we can't. We're just going to go with our books and notes. We're going to go to study hard. Goliardic lifestyle. I mean, this might, you know what? We usually pick study hard, but I think we're going to go with the Goliardic lifestyle. We're going to go there to, um, oh, we are diligent though. Uh, because we're diligent. I think that, and you know, we are going a long way. I think we are going to make the absolute most of it. Uh, well, let's see. I mean, we are, we are an eager reveler though. You know what? We haven't done this one before. We are an eager reveler. We'll still study, but I want to do, I want to try something a little different here. So that's what we're going to do. You know, the king is going to go down here and we have some, you know, connections. We have relatively good uh, relations with some of these lords. So I don't think we really need to worry too much about this. We're going to travel with our entourage. You know, we're going to travel through lands that are relatively friendly to us, such as Southstone, Golden Grove, uh, to get to Old Town here. So I think that this is, you know, in this current situation, there will be some traveling and making some, uh, making friendships with some of these other lords and stuff here as we as we depart here so we could is there anywhere that we would want to stop Ugh. do we go and visit the red keep here you know it might actually be worth it um let's customize the route uh once we depart from the eerie select the location on the map there we go it's gonna give us a little bit of danger but we can face some danger surely uh, yeah, but I do want to, I want to stop by King's Landing. Um, we could go to White Grove and High Garden as well. You know what? We might as well. So let's stop here and we'll visit the Kings of the, the Marches and we'll visit the King of the Reach as well on our way, trying to make good relations with some of these other noble houses here. So there we go. And that should, uh, that should assist us with, uh, boosting up our diplomacy lifestyle experience. A fine day like this, the weather is nice, the pastures of Doril look great, and the local livestock are positively jumping and cheering in their own guttural manner. Calves are walking next to their mothers, their fur shiny and clean. Overall, the place is competently run, although I do notice a couple oddities that I would manage a bit differently. 
the local patriarch approaches me. A fine morning to you, my lord. Are these not beauties? Are these beauties not a sight to behold? I could apply some of this back home. We could get improved pastures, which is great. And we had a 91% chance of doing so. Yeah, we're absolutely going to take this option here. And there we go. Successful advice. So we gain a nice bonus in the Eerie there from that. So we do a quick stop here and visit the High Septon in King's Landing. Uh, obviously, uh, King's Landing is ruled by the High Septon here currently in this theocracy. They were the ones who took it over after the Blackfires were kicked out. An imposing man is standing in the road ahead of us. I am Brynden Mir of Blithadurn. I have bested dozens of men in combat, and honestly, all those fights were dull. So here I am on this road looking for someone better than me, someone I can learn from. If you can best me in combat, I will become a valuable and loyal servant. Eh, he's not great, but... Um, but I think we will fend him off here, and we win the fight. So now he has come to serve us as one of the Knights of the Vale. He's not particularly good, but... He is, uh, he's part of our crew now. It's not the first time I catch my knight, Brendan. Oh, he's already, uh, <laughs> fiddling around with some flowers. Uh, this, this hedge knight here is trying to woo over Arwen Cockshaw. Oh, but she's married. Please, I beg of you, let me stay with you. Well, you know, you just joined us and I, I don't particularly, I mean, did he, did he swear loyalty to us? I actually don't remember there. Um, you're coming on with me. We have no such time. I mean, she's married, though. We can't, uh... Let's see. Do we know? Yeah, he, he says it who it's for. She is married to... How's Merryweather here? Uh, I think as a zealous person, we can't simply allow this. So we have no time for such juvenile infatuations. Our word's failure. Right. He's a little bit mad at that, but... You did swear to come along and fight with us, so... In any case, since leaving home nearly a month ago, I have seen the highs and lows, reveled in the wind blowing through my hair, and lamented the rocks in my boots. There are so many places, so many things I have yet to see out there on the open road. I feel the I feel free of the stuffy castle, if only for a little while. The roads are full of pilgrims and wanderers. Perhaps it is among them that I will find peace of mind. Once again, out here, I am truly free. We gain the trait Traveler. Excellent. Whereabouts are we? Ah, here we go. We're just about to pass through. So we went through High Garden and got to see the beautiful castle of High Garden. And now we are very nearly here. Oh, but we meet a local hero, it seems, as we traverse through the wilderness, trudging through the dirt. We encounter a modest wayward shrine, naively carved. It sports a seven-pointed star at its head and below the weathered words, Here lies Saint Falia of High Garden, blessed daughter of Soapstone. Saint Falia of High Garden seems a local spiritual figure is being patronized and one not sanctioned by the faith of the seven. Oh, well, we uh, need to we need to deal with this, obviously, uh, because this is not sanctioned and we are zealous. So cast down this heterodoxy, indeed. Bubonic plague, killer in the midst. The stranger has raised his scythe over my realm. A case of dreaded blue bu bubonic plague has been discovered. The unfortunate victim is my knight, Roland. The taint possessing his flesh is a danger to us all. While he remains afflicted, no life at court is safe. Uh, isolate and pray for redemption. Send for the maester now. Uh, oh, we need a maester. Yeah, okay. Hopefully. Hopefully. I mean, we're away from the court, but yikes. This is not This is not good. So the plague seems to be going around the former seven kingdoms at this time. This could be, this could be interesting. On our way through Bleak Host, we appear to have stumbled into a local food market. Everywhere, peasants and nobles of every culture and tongue clamor around exotic food stalls. Hmm, I am king and I want my bowl of stew. We could get a good meal, which is a nice little health boost. Um, but our caravan master says we should avoid it. Do not waste your palate on this slot. Bowls of stew are for parents. We peasants. We have much finer foods. I can't believe I almost ate this garbage. Indeed. Finally, my servants have found some people who might be a fit to serve as our court physician. Oh, I see. So we don't have a maester, but we could get uh, Leah Ark Magnaric. Then mm, I don't know about that, but this wet Westerman here, uh, Rion seems enthusiastic. His aptitude is poor. 
No, neither of both of them failed to impress me. We need a proper maester here. Um, why can't we get one? Send for a maester from the Citadel? Maybe we just need to... Well, we have one here. Asgar. Why can't he do it? No idea. Ah, oh, my ward Tegan has come of age and his time he left my care. Despite being a chatty child, he finds it difficult to get along with people. Oof, so he's just a naive appeaser. But his diplomacy is still still okay, but you know, he might have to he might have to work to improve his skills in that regard a little bit here. But nonetheless, he is still our friend, so that's kind of the more important part anyways. I'm finally here, walking the hollowed halls of Starry Sept, revered seat of all knowledge of the uh, of the uh, faith of the Seven, really, but also the Warring Star World. I have so much to learn from the holy men and women who gather between these venerable halls, and what about all the ancient scrolls and books? Of course, major centers of culture are also attractive markets and offer all the distractions that a student could ever desire. As I consider my possibilities, the locals look at me with a mixture of curiosity and confusion. It's clear that it's not every day they see a king of the Veil, men. Time to get started. Indeed, and we will get started on our education in the next episode. Thank you all for watching, Wanderers. If you enjoyed this, please do subscribe to the channel. And if you want to get your own custom characters in the game, you can become a YouTube channel member or join us on Patreon. But until the next episode, Wanderers, Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.